for joining us. Well, uh, let's go now to the BBC uh, newsroom where we're joined with uh, by Marlene Said, who's going to give us some analysis of how the newsroom's handling this breaking story. Yes, hi, Yalza. I'm here in the BBC newsroom where uh, this announcement has kept journalists incredibly busy through the night. And uh, I can speak to the BBC social media producer, Louise Hosey. Louise, the announcement of these airstrikes actually came on Twitter, didn't they? That's right. I mean, one thing that quite often happens nowadays when you have a big event taking place is that the first rumblings, the first reports of it are often heard on social media before the official announcement. And what we actually have here is at 2.03 a.m. this morning, UK time, we have this man, Abdul Kader Hariri, putting this post on Twitter. Now, we're still trying to verify his account. We're still in the process of that. But as you can see, what he says is breaking, Huge explosions shook the city in what might be the beginning of US airstrikes on ISIS HQs in Raqqa. Now, what's really interesting about this is that this actually came half an hour before the official confirmation from the Pentagon, and that was confirmed by Rear Admiral John Kirby. He also took to Twitter, in which he tweeted, US military and partner nation forces have begun striking ISIL targets in Syria using a mix of fighters, bombers and Tomahawk missiles. Louise, what's also interesting is they seem to be monitoring the death toll of what's happening on the ground using social media as well. That's right. Well, we know that Syrian activists and Syrian activist groups are very um, active on social media. And one of the groups is the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Now, again, we still can't verify these figures, but ever since the strikes happened, they have been posting details of where the strikes took place, the number of strikes. They also have reports of, of death tolls, which at this stage, I think the most recent one is 120. And some interesting hashtags coming up as well. That's right. Over the last couple of days, one hashtag that's really been gathering momentum is the hashtag not in our name, not in my name, excuse me. And that is actually from Muslims who are actually condemning IS and want to distance themselves from them. That's quite interesting. There's also another hashtag in the last couple of hours that's come out, and that's hashtag all in your name, which appears to be using by, used by some jihadists on social media. OK, thanks very much, Louise. Let's go over and speak to Driss Macau, who is the BBC world producer who's been monitoring and translating what's been said on Syrian state television because he speaks Arabic. Driss, you've had a busy day, haven't you? Yes, it's been a busy day um, since the beginning um, as the story was developing. Um, I had to monitor what Syrian TV was saying just in case they come up with any statement. And as it happens, they did issue a statement uh, mid-morning confirming that Syria was actually informed before the strike took place. And Driss, a lot of Arab nations involved in this strike. What have we been hearing from them? Well, we heard from, um, on air, we heard from the Jordanian government, uh, who confirmed to us that Jordan, in, in fact, did take part, take part in um, the strikes. Other countries didn't didn't issue any statement, unless two minutes ago, three minutes ago, Bahrain actually issued a, a statement saying that its air force did, in fact, take uh, um, put, contributed towards the strike against selected targets of ISIS. And this is uh, for the sake of uh, regional peace and international security. And how do you use this information once you get it and get it into the television? You verify it, um, you translate it, and then you distribute it to all our outlets so that it can be used you know, all, by all BBC outlets effectively. What? Okay, well, that's Driss, uh, a BBC World producer here in the newsroom.